Hi. Hello, lads. So, um, complex numbers as an algebraic kind of expression reaches its limits once we've kind of gotten as far as looking at complex roots and stuff like that. However, it does have another branch, a more important branch in, in a way, and that's the idea of um, geometrically representing them. So to geometrically represent an, uh, a complex number, we use what's called an argand. After a chap called argand diagram. Okay, so again, in, in an exam, you'll be given uh, a diagram incomplete or complete and be asked to manipulate or do something with it, same as you would be with coordinate geometry. So it works off the same basic idea as Cartesian geometry. In other words, as old school coordinate geometry, we do have an axis, a pair of axes. However, in complex numbers, we denote what we would consider to be the X axis to be the, the real axis. And what we would consider to be the Y axis, we consider the imaginary axis. So when I want to express a complex number like two plus three I, I separate it into its real component, the two, and its imaginary component, the three I, and I plot them separately and then where they meet, that is the expression of that point. So I will show you that. So let's see, I'm just gonna label this up and I'm gonna put on some scale on this. So that's one, two, three, four, I, 2i, 3i, 4i, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus i, minus 2i, minus 3i, minus 4i. So if I want to plot 2 plus 3i, let's say call this one uh, uh, z1, okay, z1. So Z1 is 2 plus 3i. There's 2 and there's 3i. So that is Z1 right there. Okay? Done and dusted. Let's say I want to plot uh, Z2. And Z2 is minus 3 plus i. So Z2 minus 3 on the real plus i. There is Z2. Two. Okay, now I suppose this is where it gets really, really fun in that you can then start to apply some of the rules of geometry, coordinate geometry in particular, to this. So, for example, one of the really cool rules we can use is the fact that we can work out the distance from the origin to that point. So I'm going to show you that. And that's a really, really handy little thing to be able to do because if you can do that, then you've got the ability to bring in our favorite friend, which is called trig. So there we go. Let's plot a point. Let's go with Z3. 3 plus 4i. So there's 3 and there's 4i. So there's Z3. Okay, now for a second, I'm just going to rub out Z1 so I can just have a clear run of this. So imagine me drawing a line back. What this allows me to do is to find the length, the distance between those two points, okay? Now, look at it very carefully. Can you see the fact that this actually forms a right angle triangle where I have one side has a length of four and the other side has a length of three and it allows me to find the length of the third side or more importantly the distance from the origin to the complex number now there's a fancy name on that that's called the modulus 
the modulus, okay? And the modulus is always going to be written as using the length symbol. So the modulus of Z3 is going to be, well, it's just going to be Pythagoras, isn't it? The square root of, which is going to be 5. Which is pretty cool. Now, what some of you will have noticed is that if you get any, if I get Z3, the modulus of Z3 conjugate, in other words, where Z3 conjugate is 3 minus 4i, you're going to get the exact same modulus, which makes total sense. So if I look at it, um, 3 minus 4i would be here. That would be Z3 conjugate. So you can see it'd be the same distance, just reflected. And if I got the conjugate of this one, it would reflect over here. And if I got a conjugate of this one, it would reflect over here. So it'd actually get 90 degrees between each one. That's a 90 degree angle, which is pretty cool. Okay. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's how does that help me? Okay. Well, this is the beginning of being able to introduce the concept of trigonometry into complex numbers and it allows you to produce an entirely new set and we will we will eventually get into it okay but we're going to try a few of these okay and we're going to give them a go and you're going to see how well or not you're able to do it okay so i'm going to try a few and you can do them with me or not do them with me it's still your choice so let's start with a very simple one if z is 1 plus 3i, we're going to plot the following. We're going to plot i times z. We're going to plot i squared times z. And we're going to plot i cubed times z. So first of all, we have to work out what these are. And then we have to plot them. Okay, so let's start with i, z. Okay, so i times z, there's z, so that's i times 1 plus 3i. So i times 1 is i, and i times 3i is minus 3. So that's the first one, though, that's minus 3 plus i. Not sure where you want to look at that one. Now, i squared times z. Right, let's have a look at this one. I squared, we did this in the previous class, I squared is minus one. So that's really minus one times this. So we're just changing all the signs. Okay. And the third one, I cubed. Well, I squared is minus one. So what's minus one times I? It's minus I. So that's minus I times one plus three I. So that's going to be minus one I. And then what's a minus one by a three is a minus three, but I squared, so that makes it a plus three. So I'm going to plot these points now. Again, you will not be asked to draw a graph 99 times out of 100 it's drawn for you. So I'm just going to go out to three, one, two, three, up to three, one, sorry i 2i 3i minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and down to minus i minus 2i and minus 3i so minus 3 plus i that's there minus 1 minus 3i that's there and finally, minus i plus 3. So, sorry, 3 minus i. Uh, 3 minus i is there. Now, what's surprising about all three of these is that if you get the modulus of all three of them, If 
you get the modulus of all three of them, they're the same distance. I think I have a ruler here. Okay. That could be very accurate, but you bear with me. Around three centimeters, around three centimeters, and around there, thereabouts. I think I was a bit off in my plotting because the scales aren't right. But all of them are going to be, if I'm right, they're all going to be root 10 as a modulus. Each of them have a length from the center of root 10. Okay. Obviously, if it's done to scale, they'll all be the same. So that's quite an interesting little experiment there. Okay. We've talked about this before. Remember, there's a pattern that happens. I would confidently predict that if I did i to the power of 4 times z, the answer would be up here. Because if we talked about this before, we said that these i's repeat in patterns of 4. And they would form the four points around a circle, each of them at a right angle to each other. Which is pretty cool when you think about it. You know, um, I suppose, listen, we'll do it for the crack. It's not there, but let's do it. Number four, i to the power of four times z. Well, i squared is minus one. So what's minus one by minus one? It's plus one. So that's one times one plus three i, which is one plus three i, one plus three i up here. And you have the fourth spoke. Now, again, probably out of whack, but again, it would have a root 10 if this is plotted properly. I don't have graph paper with me, but you get the idea. 90 degree angles between everything. Pretty cool, pretty nifty, absolutely amazing. So give a few of these a go. You should be well able to do them, okay? This is all about plotting points here. Um, there should be nothing too difficult. I, I'll try one more just to kind of give your, your brain a kind of a go at these. Okay, I'm going to plot, um, I'm going to plot, well, no, we won't even bother with plotting. Let's just work out the modulus of 3 plus i over minus 2 minus 3i. So modulus means square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, I don't have an a squared plus b squared, so I have to make one first. So let's take this away and we'll just work this out as our... So let's do our magically division on this one. So multiply top and bottom by two plus, or sorry, minus two plus three i, minus two plus three i. So what's our trick for the bottom? It's two squared plus three squared. That's 13, I think. Four plus nine is 13. Over. Now we have to work out the top. So let's get our little grid going here. We've got uh, three plus two i, Sorry, 3 plus i, and we've got minus 2 plus 3i. Minus 6, minus 2i, uh, 9i, and then we have minus 3. So it's minus 9 plus 7i. So that's minus 9 plus 7i. And we're going to get the absolute value of that. So that's going to be the square root of minus 9 over 13 squared plus 7 over 13 squared. So that's going to turn out as something, I'm assuming. So whatever that's going to be, use your calculator. I don't have my calculator to hand, but um, you're going to get an answer for that. I should probably, that's 81 over 169. Let's try and work this out. Okay. Um, 81 divided by 169 plus bracket 49 divided by 169 close bracket and we'll root that answer uh, 0.87 or something like that I probably could do it with a calculator we could do it a kind of care for this. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's going to be, listen, I'll try and do it old fashioned. That's going to be uh, square that. That's 81 over 169, 81 over 169 plus 49 over 169. That's 80 and 40 is 130. That's 130 over 130 over 169. And you're 
whatever the root is of that, that's going to be your modulus. Okay. So you could work it out that way, but I don't think you need to. Okay. <clears throat>